Good morning, everyone. My name is Rachel Garaldi, and I'm so thrilled to be leading worship this morning with all of you. We're going to be looking a little bit at embodiment in the unification of body and soul and um, the emerging and growing field of body theology while spending some time in meditation and in prayer and in song. Very thankful for Emerson Gale to be here uh, leading us in music. And um, we'll, before we start with the prelude, are there any announcements that we want to share with each other? There's no announcements. I was like, you, I'm sure you have an announcement. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, we're welcoming you. That's my announcement. Welcome. We're very glad you're here. Thank you. Any answers? Oh, wonderful. Well, let us center into this space and this worship um, as we listen with our hearts and our minds and our bodies.
I invite you to join us in the blessing of the peace candle. In Christ was life, and the life was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us pray for peace and the things that make for peace as we light the peace candle. You're invited to join me in singing uh, Breathe on Me, Breath of God in the Methodist hymnal number 420. A reading from Psalm 139, verses 7 through 16. Where shall I go from your spirit? Oh, where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even in the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when, I, when as yet there was none of them. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Please join me in reading the contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer, our new version. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Way, Truth, and Life, Force of Love and Light, Flowing within and all around us, may your realm of compassion, justice, and peace rule our world. Thank you for nurturing and guiding us, forgiving us and helping us forgive, and leading us away from harmful desires. Please save us from all forms of evil, for you are our source, our home, our power, all goodness and beauty forever. Amen.
Dear body, sometimes I hate you. You ache, you get tireder sooner than I'd like to admit. You wake me in the night for no good reason. Your cells duplicate at unpredictable rates. New gray hairs and fine lines and silver stretch marks show up out of nowhere. You let me down when I need you the most. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I don't recognize the person staring back at me. I look exhausted, worn, aged. Sometimes I want to break from the living with you. I'd prefer to trade you in for a newer model, a model that isn't in constant pain, that fits better in the pair of jeans, that has more energy. With you, I am limited, pound by skin and bones and thinning hair. With you, I am fragile. It wasn't always this way. I remember when you had invisible springs. You didn't need coaxing or tending or fixing. You had endless courage and resilience. You could stay up all night with a friend or chase littles around the yard. You seemed invincible, but your memory infallible. Yet here we are. This flesh and bone, these cages, these places of freedom and constraint. I want my body to be perfect, but instead I'm reminded of what I cannot master, what I cannot perfect. But God knows what it's like to live in flesh. God went to great, even incarnational lengths to be born as a tiny infant. If God too lived in a body, then God knows the ache of growing pains and the feeling of goosebumps on a brisk day and the comfort of a warm embrace. God felt the gurgle of a hungry stomach, the annoying prick of a splinter after a hard day's work. God wept over the death of a friend. Ours is a God who sneezed, who rubbed to their eyes when they were sleepy. Ours is a God who knew longing, heartbreak, excitement, frustration, the full range of what it means to be human. A God who knows what it means to live in a body. So when my own body drags me down, when my muscles ache, when my worries keep me up at night, when my fear for the future leaves me motionless, when I feel lonely and exhausted and burdened, I do not worship a God who is far off. This is a God who knows my humanity inside and out. God has counted every hair on my head, has bottled up every tear I have shed, not simply because the word formed us, knit us together in our mother's wombs, there was there from the very beginning, but because God wore our skin. Dear, dear body, I get it. Or at least I'm starting to. You do not have an unlimited supply. You run out and I need to listen. Maybe I should really go to bed a little earlier or let you off the hook for craving those extra salty chips. I need to sense when you are struggling and gently acknowledge that you are actually changing. That time and love and grief and life have worn themselves into my skin day by day. This is the beautiful, terrible evidence that we have lived. So, Let's give up the myth of perfection, shall we? Perfection in what we eat, perfection in what we assume our bodies should look like or feel like, perfection in imagining we'd be over this weird body stuff by now. So I wanna say I'm sorry. You couldn't help aging, changing, being human. I love you. I'll try to be gentle and patient with your ways. So dear body, let us quiet ourselves and look to God, who made us in all of our imperfections and in our total dependence. Through God, in God, we live and move and find our beings. Let us be more awake, more alive, more drawn together body and soul, more drawn together as body and soul into that single purpose to love and be loved by a God who calls us God's own. Let us remember that this fragile body is good enough. That letter was written, um, I believe, by Kate Baller in this book called Good Enough, uh, devotionals by Kate Baller and Jennifer Ritchie. Kate Baller wrote, is most well known for her book, uh, No Cure for Being Human, where she writes about her experience 
of faith while uh, experiencing cancer. And um, her meditations on the body have been powerful for me to think about that unification of body and soul, particularly in a world and in a faith tradition of Christianity where body and soul classically have been disconnected. That soul has been elevated over the body and the body has been shamed and ridiculed and pushed down. It's exciting that over the last 20 to 30 years, there's an emerging theological study called body theology. So think of theology being the study of the experience of God. You have something like liberation theology, which is the study of God through the experience of oppression. Or feminist, womanist, mujerista, Asian women theology of the theologies of the experience of God through those experiences of being women in those various ways. Body theology, in some ways, has little tendrils that go through it all. Because it is the experience of God through our bodies, of us being human. It, this field of study has gained traction over the last decade or so as those who are looking at ableism, a place of oppression in our society, are looking at what does it mean to be a disabled or otherwise abled person of faith? What does it look like to look at the church as having disability? What does it look like to experience God as someone who may have some part of their humanity limited and yet experience other parts of humanity magnified? It is a time in our history where we are saying, no, body and soul are not disconnected. They are one. In fact, in our Christian tradition, God came down to earth and became human, understood fully what it meant to cry, to laugh, to be sick, to be angry. You imagine God stomping God's feet and having a tantrum as a four-year-old. When I see my children, I'm like, wow, I guess God was like that once. <laughs> but it also means that when one of my best friends calls me up in her early 40s and tells me that she's been diagnosed with ALS, it means that God is with her as well. And God is with all of us who are in tears, who are mourning, who are walking with her in this journey of illness. It means that God understands what it means when we are in pain. And God understands what it means when we rise above that pain, when we rise above the oppression of lifelong disability. God sees us as a person, not as a lesson, not as a problem, not as a token person to lift up. God sees us as who we are. And it reminds me that my response, one of my responsibilities here on earth, not only to embody that sense of spirit and that sense of God, which in my faith tradition in Quakerism, we talk about that of God in everyone. The experience of embodying God means that part of my responsibility is to take care of that temple, that vessel, take care of my body and be kind to it. There's no extremes, there's no perfectionism here. But as my uh, clinical supervisor in chaplaincy so often said, Rachel, you just try to be gentle with yourself. Gentle. When I push and I try to do everything in a day and I'm feeling worn and weary and bruised to the bone, try to be gentle with yourself. Grab a cup of tea and just sit. Just stop. Be with God right there in that place. So I invite you this morning to be with God. And I'm going to lead us in a meditation that's called a body scan meditation. 
It has its roots in Buddhism. However, it has now become a secular practice that is used throughout the medical field as a way of non-judgment awareness of your body. And we're going to take some of that divine light inside of us and hold the different parts of our body through the meditation in that non-judgmental love. So I invite you to sit comfortably. If you are able with your feet on the floor, find a soft back. Throughout this meditation, if you feel like you need to shift or move, please do so. Holding that space for your body to be what it needs to be. So we're gonna start with a couple deep breaths. Breathing in. Breathing out. And as you begin to be aware of that breath, move the breath from your chest down into your belly. Softly rising your belly, letting it fall as you breathe in. Bring your awareness to the edges of your body. You might need to wiggle your toes or your fingers and move your body slightly to feel that. Feel the edges where your body ends and the air begins. This is your body, everything contained inside. Before we do that formal body scan, I just want to ground us so that we feel in this moment connected down into the earth, up into the universe, and to each other. So imagine your feet. Think of your feet. Bring your awareness to your feet and imagine roots growing out of them. It's roots growing down from your feet down through the floor, through the foundation of this building, into the deep, dark, rich earth. Down through the earth, through the waters, through the different layers of the earth, down into that core. And as each of us travels down to that core, we find that we are connected to each other. Grounded, stable. Bring your awareness up through the earth, back through those layers, through the waters and the deep, dark, rich earth back through the foundation of this building, up into your feet, into your body and all of its edges. Bring your awareness now to the top of your head. And as you imagined roots below, imagine tendrils of light pulling from your head up, up, up into the universe connecting with thousands, millions, billions of tendrils of light emanating from all around you. The earth, the animals, the plants, the people, connecting all of us. Breathe into that connection. Bringing your awareness back down through those tendrils of light back through the top of your head. Bring your attention to what feels like your core. In each of our bodies, contained within our edges, 
is a center. For some of us, for some of us, it's the heart. For others, it's a little lower down in our bellies. For others, it may even be lower in the sacrum. Find that center and breathe into it. Bringing your awareness to that center, look a little deeper. See if you can find a soft light in that center. See if you can imagine a ball of light, that of God within you, that of the divine mystery of spirit, of soul, of body combined. At that core, your inner light. Knowing that that light is there, let's start our scan. Bringing our attention to our feet, our soles, our toes, our ankles. Notice how your feet feel. Notice without judgment. Just simply notice. Wiggle your toes, move your ankles. Keeping your awareness there for a few breaths. Now taking some of that light from your core, imagine surrounding your feet and your ankles with that soft light. A light of non-judgmental love and gratitude. Next, bring your awareness up through your legs, your calves, your knees, your hips, whole part of your body and just notice how it feels if you need to move or shift do so just notice your legs and your hips and your knees I'll take some of that light from your core and imagine surrounding your legs and your hips and your knees with that soft light, non-judgmental love and gratitude. Breathe into that light. Bring attention now to your torso. Feel the bench under your bottom. Bring that non-judgmental attention to how your belly and your torso feel. You might find something is tight and try to breathe into it. Relax your bot the bottom part of your back top part of your back, soften your belly, breathe into that place of non-judgmental awareness. Paying attention to your lungs, to your heart, 
maybe even to that little gurgle that you feel here and there. Again, take some of that light. Imagine wrapping yourself with that light, that light of non-judgmental love, gratitude. Breathe into that blanket, that cozy light. Bringing your awareness up to your shoulders and to your neck. Down through your arms and your hands, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your shoulders if you need to. Bring that awareness to your arms, your hands, your shoulders, your neck. Breathe into that awareness. Take some of that light and wrap your hands and your arms and your shoulders and your neck with that beautiful, soft light of non judgmental love. Bring your awareness up to your head, to your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. To the top of your head, even to your thoughts and your mental health inside. This precious body of yours, hold it in that gentle awareness. Relax your jaw, your tongue, relax your eyes. Breathe into that non judgmental awareness. And taking some uh, of that soft light. Imagine wrapping your head and your ears, and your eyes, and your nose, and your mouth in that, that soft, non judgmental light of love and gratitude. Feel that light all through you, from your innermost cells out to your edges a little bit beyond, filling you with love and gratitude for being just who you are, this body, this person, this child of God right now. Breathe deeply into your edges. And as we come back from this meditation, as you open your eyes, wiggle your fingers and toes, bringing this awareness of this time now, of this body now, out into this world, let us be grateful. Balor and Richie write a blessing for the body. Blessed is the body that offers soft hugs on hard days, whose curves fit our pets and our kids and our partners, whose hands hold another alongside hospital beds and in nursing homes and at the altar and on the first day of school, whose breasts nurse 
and legs run to chase the littles, and whose toes balance us on the earth, whose wrinkles tell stories of laughs and tears and worries. Blessed are the imperfect, fragile bodies, this flesh and bone, these cells that sometimes duplicate for no reason whatsoever, this skin that is stitched together with scars and stretch marks and fine lines. Blessed is the body because it is a home, not just for us, but for those who love us. And sometimes you just need to stand in front of the mirror, take off all your clothes, and remember that this body, your body, is God's home address. Thank you. Friends, I invite you to join me in uh, reading the 23rd Psalm, which is on the back of your program. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall forever follow me in the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And let us sing. Please rise if you are able for the Lord of the dance, and let us be joyful.
spend some time now in that silent meditative prayer of this time of seeking spirit, holding the messages, the prayers, the songs, all the things that we have experienced in this time together in our hearts and lifting up any unspoken prayers or needs up to God.
Jill Hale, a theologian, wrote, <coughs> that a holistic theological anthropology, a holistic theological anthropology must reject the duality of body and soul in favor of the unification of our experience of being human and our experience of God. As we seek in this church to become more and more open and affirming, as we seek to nurture the evolving and growing community that is around us, may we also seek that holistic theological anthropology that this church can become a home for. As tradition of this time of seeking spirit, our benediction coming from Philippians 4 reads, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, is there, if, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about those things. And may you bring them out into the world.